Hi friends, and welcome back to Star Street, where we break free from work addiction. I'm Sarit. We previously discussed the difference between those that have an addiction to work and those that are merely work enthusiasts. The differences are critical, for the bottom line is that work engagement is really adding to life, while work addiction could be life-threatening. If you haven't gotten a chance to watch that video, I link it down below, go ahead and watch it after this one. In this video, I'd like to talk with you about the possibility of a work enthusiast turning into a workaholic, meaning continue working hard even when this has negative impacts on their life. Note that addiction, broadly defined, is continued use despite adverse consequences. In my opinion, and from my personal experience, engagement can turn to addiction, and therefore it is important to be aware of this risk and pay attention to our behavior, even if we are just work enthusiasts. If you have the ability to work hard with pleasant feelings, which is work engagement, watch out, for you might also possess the capacity of working hard with unpleasant feelings, workers. Let's discuss a few reasons or risk factors that might contribute to a work enthusiast becoming a workaholic. One, we are absorbed in our work. We previously discussed that it was found in research that work enthusiasts tend to become absorbed in their work. Now, Work absorbment is actually also prevalent with workaholics. Per experts in the field, the absorption component of work engagement might evoke unhealthy behavior. Employees who are so immersed in their work that they forget to rest and recover may develop health problems since their body systems do not stabilize. In addition, when we are absorbed in something, and especially when we invest a lot of hours in it, our worldview narrows. This can lead to an unbalanced perspective that attributes over-importance to work, which can, in time, lead to workaholism. 2. The force of habit. Holding on tight to our work habits even though the external circumstances have changed. As work enthusiasts, we work many hours and it is po and it's positively enriches our lives. When external conditions change, such as our work environment changes, our workload, our boss or her demands increase, we might find it hard to update or adjust our expectations from ourselves. In our society, work tends to become our identity. It is part of who we are, which makes it even harder to adapt or let go on time. I mean, we don't want to change our work habits of always overperforming and having the can-do attitude, right? It's like trying to hold on to a relationship that once was amazing, but is no longer serving us. 3. Modern day connectivity and work location flexibility. Our tech tools allow us to work more hours than ever before and around the clock, even if it negatively impacts our lives. So, if in the past a work enthusiast could safely stay only an enthusiast because there was an objective limit to how much they could work, Today, there is almost no limitation as our infrastructure allows us to work from any time, any time and from anywhere. 4. As work enthusiasts, we could experience a gradual shift in what drives us, our motivations. Initially, we work hard simply because we enjoy doing it. Over time, the outcomes of hard, dedicated work, such as appreciation and praise, the feeling of being an essential part of something bigger than ourselves, monetary rewards and more, may shift our focus, deter us, confuse us away from our initial, more intrinsic motivations. They may lead us to a more extrinsic motivation that may, in turn, lead to workalism. Since you don't have full control over others' opinion on you or their mere desire to show appreciation, you enter into some kind of a rat in a wheel situation and you chase and chase and chase something you can forever chase, especially if you are a perfectionist. Being focused on extrinsic motivations, such as mentioned, um, of promotions, prestige, salary, appreciation and approval 
means that our feelings of joy and fulfillment take the back seat and no longer guide us. And this state of mind allows for overwork even when we don't enjoy it. 5. Sense work enthusiasts work many hours. It is possible for them to, over time, develop a deep connection with their organization. As work enthusiasts, we might develop a sense of dedication to our job beyond the average. We see meaning in what we do beyond just work per se or a way of making ends meet. We carry weight on our shoulder. The contribution itself is significant to us and we see a kind of a calling, a purpose in what we do. This might make us sacrifice our own good for our work or our organization. Six, it could be a slow, gradual process that we might not notice until we are deep in the addiction habit. When we find ourselves working long hours and don't enjoy it for the first time, we think it is only temporary. And then over time, we get used to the new reality where our limits are pushed. Our perspective changes and what didn't seem reasonable in the past gradually becomes the new normal. We enter a bubble in which our behavior is more automatic and less and less takes our feelings and the consequences of working so hard into consideration. Again, the narrow perspective makes anything that still fits into our mind or life appear more critical or important than in a more balanced life. This means we attribute far more importance to work than what is reasonable or healthy for us. Okay, now let's discuss a few warning signs to pay attention to if you are a work enthusiast. One. You are so absorbed in your work that you forget to rest and recover. Like going to the restroom, like taking a lunch break on time and not in front of a computer, and like taking, like even, you know, taking just short breaks to stretch your legs. Two, your emotions gradually become less positive. So if you used to feel excitement, energy, and happiness while working, you start feeling more overwhelmed, guilt, anger, disappointment, and over time, you could also develop hopelessness. Three, you become preoccupied with work even when not at work and not working. Four, your workload is increasing and gradually or even suddenly is overwhelming. Five, sleep issues, especially trouble winding down to fall asleep at night, or waking up around 3 or 4 a.m. and having persistent thoughts related to work. To wrap up, I'd like to offer a strategy for those of us that are work enthusiasts. One of the most essential answers or solutions to avoiding deteriorating to workalism is living consciously. By living consciously, I mean being aware of what is going on in our lives with us how we feel and what changes are taking place. I mean avoiding the autopilot mode, understanding that life is dynamic and changes all the time. There is nothing permanent except change. If we live life alive, we can adjust and move with the changes in our lives. A tree that is unbending is easily broken. Our attachment cannot be to our current life and work situation since these change and many times not under our control. We ought to be attached to our joy and worthiness, which is love and appreciation for ourselves. That's our compass. If life changes and our updated reality doesn't serve us anymore, meaning working hard doesn't make us happy anymore, we use joy as our compass Remember that we are worthy and adjust our lives accordingly. That's it for this one. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Do you wonder if you have an addiction to work? I've created a questionnaire that would help you find out. Grab yours by clicking the link in the description box down below. And lastly, come visit me at starsley.com where we break free from work addiction.